So what am I looking for in a media mech? And it would be an, it would be easy to answer big guns. Big guns never tire. You can have your fancy plans and your elaborate lance builds. Someone gets up there with an AC-20. I've got your attention. Even when I need 12s to hit. Even when I need 12s to hit. We don't even have to do the modifiers. We're at long range. I ran. You moved maximum hexes. I give you cover. Like, we don't even have to calculate it. I need 12s to hit. I'm going to take that shot. And you're going to be watching those dice. Because you're going to be like, Fritz hasn't rolled any 12s yet. This game. And we're about midway through the game. So, he's due for 12s. I hope it's not now. And certainly the Hunchback. I, I love the Hunchback. But that is a very, very focused type mech. There are certain mechs in every weight class, but especially in the medium class, where I, I'm trying to do something. I want to say like a specialized role. But if I was opening things up, generally speaking, what are the qualifications for medium mech that you are looking for i'm going to share mine and then of course in the comments the secret weapon you guys give some amazing feedback amazing comments amazing battle tech ideas one day we'll meet one day we will meet as mercenaries on the table and i'm a little bit fearful because there's some really really smart smart, ruthless battle tech players out there based on, on the comments. You know, if, if I heard you over the comms approaching with your mech, I, I don't know. It would be, it would be interesting. And, and that's something definitely uh, we have to connect more with, but medium mech wise. So I kind of feel like with a medium mech, I want to have weapons and I'll give an example sort of as a template, the Griffin. I want to have weapons that match in terms of range um, or potential damage output. So the Griffin's got the PPC stock. We're looking at stock, not variant. PPC LRMs. I, I kind of like um, medium to longer range weapons on my medium mechs because there's this duality of they kind of have the speed. I feel like if they have medium to long range weapons, they have the speed where they can hunt down those pesky light mechs whether it's, it's a massive threat like a Jenner or a specialized threat like a Panther or even if you're just like running around a Locust. A lot of players would ignore a Locust, even using a Locust as a direct spotter. But um, here's why if you have the ability, we're going to sidebar just for a moment here. If you have the ability to take out a light mech, even, even if tactically for the mission, what's it really going to add in terms of damage? Let's, let's look at a Locust, right? Single Locust. If you drop that mech, then that messes with your opponent's initiative. Initiative is huge in Battletech. I mean, that's, that's kind of like the first thing you want to wrap your head around, um, especially when you get to new players. We want to explore that, especially when you get to that danger close point blank. Um, if, you know, think about this. I've got my Battlemaster. You've got your Battlemaster. We're going head to head, even though I guess we should be best friends, mech warriors with Battlemasters. You lose initiative. You've got to move. You've got to move. What do you really do in that position? You stand still. I'm going to move side or rear. If you move, I'm going to counter and, and try to get what's favorable to me. That's, that's massive on, on the one-on-one -on -one aspect. So maybe you play it safe and disengage, try to backpedal a little bit. Now, yes, one-on-one -on -one is, is very different, but you'd be surprised. As soon as you lose one mech one initiative sink it becomes much harder to keep up um, especially if you lose initiative if you lose two or three things um, crumble very very fast counter and i know a lot of you guys house rule and i'm not saying no to the house rules but uh, this is why taking a couple of infantry take some jump infantry to keep up even if you don't want to do a karnov and i gave you permission to go out and buy a karnov and if you haven't listened to that podcast, that's up in my channel under the Battletech playlist. I am re-giving you, I'm reauthorizing you as your mercenary commander to purchase a Karnoff, some warriors, and some infantry. Maybe some goblins too, if you've got the budget. Uh, that, that's a nice little setup. That's a nice little thing that is going to take you really, really far, and you're going to be able to incorporate in many, many games. And I will only take 3% C-bill commission on all of your contracts for that bit of... of knowledge that little download but 
a lot of people um, will take infantry for the infantry sink. So at least if you start losing mechs, yeah, you're down on the tonnage, you're down on the guns, but you're still in the game. Uh, but I do know that a lot of players house rule infantry, so they're at a separate phase. They don't count for initiative. And, and you know, that, that makes sense. But we're looking tactical-wise, um, raw, rules as written. So I want to take that medium mech, something like the Griffin, because if it has a medium to long range, if I can tag that locust, if I can tag you, if I can tag that light mech, um, it, it could be something a little more aggressive, like a Valkyrie, where a Valkyrie, I want to deal with, I want to neutralize it, either take it out or drive it away, but the Valk still has some good speed. It's not the fastest, but it's got good speed for a light mech. It's got mobility. That's going to be a pain to chase down, and even with my light mech, light mech versus light mech, you could run away. It's going to be hard. If you have a light mech like a Jenner chasing my light mech, then you might possibly be able to take me out. So I feel like, I don't want to say sniping, but I feel like the medium mech threatens the light mechs. It's a serious threat because it has range and it has the speed. If I, I should say, if I have the range, it has the speed. We also get to um, armor. And, and this is, yes, in the medium mech category, we have to be careful because the lower end tonnage, you know, there's this overlap where heavy light mech or light medium mech. Then we get into the echelon of heavy, medium mech, light, heavy mech. I mean, that, that, that crossover, you know, the cutoff is very binary in the tech manuals, but there is some flow in there. So we have to be careful with the medium mechs. If it's the higher tonnage, you got some confidence. You're there and you're like, you know, I'm going to roll up, you know, hunch, hunchback, hunchy. A lot of people are afraid of the hunchies and you're going to run up there. You've got bite but you don't have the staying power. You don't have the staying power of some of these um, heavier mechs. You have to watch that. We got to be careful. And, and you know, I'm saying that. Um, a, a funny comment, an awesome comment, another sidebar really quick, talking about, I was asked questions, I was asked a couple of questions in the comments on YouTube here about managing heat, especially when we look at some of the, um, the re-seen, unseen Warhammer Marauder, uh, Rifleman to some extent too, um, kind of the classic, the classic mechs. And I was able to dispense that wisdom with the disclaimer, with the full disclaimer that, you know, I always push the heat. I know what I'm getting myself into, but I'm not th the best. You shouldn't listen so with me playing, seeing the tabletop with what's going on in terms of pushing heat. But we, we can dispense and we can explore that. Um, we have to be careful with those medium mechs being aggressive because it could put you in a place where you bite off more than you can chew that said the medium mechs having like the griffin having the ability with the tonnage to mount the redundancy mount you know two weapons that have some decent punch ppc lrm you can put a little smack down on some of those heavier mechs especially if they are a light heavier mech and you maintain the mobility, um, often with speed and jump capability, to get the heck out of there. You, you are quicker. I mean, I might absorb a, a shot or two here and there, not that I want to do that, but you have that. So that's what I look for with a medium mech. I, I would like to, now that we have the tonnage, I'd like redundancy of weapons, redundancy in battle tech, or in, in any wargaming situation is where you have two weapons of about the same range and damage output potential. So if you take that shot, you know, okay, I, I have two shots or I have three shots as opposed to just having one weapon. Well, you know, that's, that's very, very binary. You don't have any backup um, for the hit or miss. In the lighter mechs, you don't always have redundancy of the same weapon systems because you're limited by a lot of tonnage. You're limited by where you can position. Medium mechs open up a lot. So I kind of want to feel like I want to take advantage of that. And I'd like to push out the range because I can hunt those pesky light mechs. I can put some hurt on the heavies and I can redeploy. Um, I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the mediums if I have to, although I'd rather not. And the assaults, you know, look, we're, we're just going to continue to try and avoid all of the assault mechs. Your criteria for a generalized, generalist, general speaking, medium mech, what's on that checklist? What are some of the 
the mechs that we should be exploring as mech commanders.